Welcome back to the doghouse. I am going to start on my Ravel's 1970 Dodge Charger RT kit. Uh, I've been looking forward to doing a 1970 for a long time. And I have a video coming out one of these days that you will see my collection of Dodge Chargers from 1967 on up. And I have quite a few. But I've never really had a true 1970. I have done a conversion where I've made a yeah, pretty, pretty decent rendition, but I was so happy when this kit came out. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a vinyl top on this kit. And so I wanted to go over how I'm going to create a vinyl top. What I've done, first of all, is I looked at the pictures to see what a vinyl top looked like on a 70 charger. That was quite important. And what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to mark the approximate area where I'm going to put the, boy, I don't know what they are called. It's just, it's where the vinyl top overlaps. Um, and I'm going to use some half round um, styrene. And what I'll do is I will just put it on here and I will glue this down, okay? And that's where I'm gonna start. And then of course I'll put the, uh, the trim along the bottom here and along here. So stay with us and you'll see how I build a vinyl top. Well, you can see that so far we've put our strips on here. I have put the, uh, the inner part of the molding here. This will be a, a chrome color. And I've put molding right along here. Now, I'm in the middle of putting on my uh, masking tape and I'm using Tamiya's tape to tape these areas. I'm going to put some on right here because I don't want to get any of this paint that I'm going to spray on my moldings that are going to be chrome. So I'm going to put some on here. And then I've put this blue tape here because the paint that I'm going to spray kind of gets everywhere. So I want to make sure to cover the body of the car so that I don't get a bunch of overspray. So we're going to finish masking this up and get ready to Well, spray. now we are ready to paint the vinyl top. I've got everything masked off that I want to have masked and we're ready to go. And what I use is this Rust-Oleum multicolor textured paint. Uh, this is kind of a gray and white speck and it doesn't really matter because we're going to be painting over that anyway. So get ready and here we go. Just light, light shots on this. I'm not trying to put a lot of paint down, just enough to cover. This stuff is quite thick. So it will give me a nice uh, vinyl top look and texture as you will see later. But I do not want to put too much of it on. Make sure I get everywhere. here and see let's see here's a little spot I got to get right in there I've never tried to decan this and, and try it that way kind of afraid to <laughs> so um, I think I need to go a little bit right up there okay you can see it's getting a little runny in some spots. So put a little bit too much in some places. And I want to try and move it around just enough where those runs aren't going to build up on the edge too much. So I still have to take that tape off at some point in time. Looks like I got a little booger right there, but 
It'll be fine. Things will work out with it. It'll level itself out just fine. This is a great paint that tends to um, give you a texture, even though right now it, it doesn't, uh, doesn't have a texture to it. It certainly will here in a few minutes when it dries. So there's that step. So I let that dry overnight, and you can see I have a nice texture. The little area here that we had a little booger, uh, it, it evened right out. Um, I might have got the paint a little bit thin right through here. That's okay. There's still a, there's still a texture there. So I think overall uh, we did okay with the, uh, uh, with the base coat for the final top. Now, I can paint over this any color I want. I could do a white. Um, I could do a brown or I could do a black and for this project we're gonna have a black vinyl top what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mix up some of the mission models uh, black primer believe it or not it's a great paint it works on so many different things and it leaves just a little teeny teeny bit of a sheen which is exactly what I'm after for this vinyl top so we've got it mixed up here in the gun and let's get it sprayed Well, I've taken the tape off, and you can see that it's pretty much dry. There's one little spot that's just kind of finishing up there on the top. But uh, just kind of a light gloss to it, very, very low sheen, which is what you'd want for a nice new vinyl top. Uh, I think it turned out pretty, pretty darn good. Quick, easy, and I think it looks pretty darn good. It's too bad I don't keep this car white, because, man, that sure would look awesome on there. But we actually have other plans for this body. I'm getting ready to paint the main color on the 70 Charger and I wanted to show you the holder that I use. It is made out of a just a metal hanger and what I did is I bent this metal hanger in kind of an S shape and I use it to hold I use it to hold um, my car bodies as I spray them. So the first thing I'm going to put on is a primer coat and I'm just going to decan some of this and put this on. I, uh, there's other primers I use as well, but this is the one I'm going to use tonight. And then, not that I usually use a rattle can, but I have this one of uh, Tester's lacquer system, and I'm going to use this to paint the body with. So let's see how things turn out. We've got the primer on it, and I shot it with my airbrush, and then I've gone over with a uh, with a polishing pad after it dried, just to make sure I knocked any. Uh, anything off of it and I've tack ragged it once to try and get anything off of it that I'm not happy with and I'm just blowing things right now make sure I don't have any little boogers in the paint so one thing that really bothers me is to get things in my paint so should be ready to go I like this lacquer system because it does dry fairly quickly and Although usually I will just use the testers uh, bottled paint and mix it with um, lacquer thinner. It dries quickly that way. Uh, this particular paint uh, works out very well. And I heated it up. I put it in a, um, in a uh, metal pan with, with water. Um, I boiled that, that pan and then I stuck this in afterwards for about 15-20 seconds just enough to warm it up so that it would um, flow a little bit smoother so let's see how this goes um, I think I got everything I wanted there with this I'm just going to give the first coat as kind of a mist something for the other coats to bite to and there is the beginning. Well, we have finished up with a second coat of that lacquer base system, and I really like it. Between coats, I just give it a light uh, polishing, and you can see that there's no boogers in the paint. It's actually got a decent shine to it, but what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some of this. It's a high gloss Model Master um, uh, enamel, and I'm going to Mix some of that up and, and give it a coat 
on here just to try and get a little bit better shine. We'll see how that turns out. I'm working on color sanding the charger and how I do it is I use these polishing pads. Um, I had four of them but I seem to be missing one somewhere. Uh, I'm gonna start out with the 1200 grit. Um, actually as, as smooth as this paint is I'm probably gonna go with the I think it's 1800. can't remember I've used it so many times. Um, anyway and so what we do is we just go uh, get it wet and lightly go over the finish of the kit or of the model I should say very lightly and what this does is it t smooths out the ridges on the paint or the uh, what do you call that the orange peel the little bit of orange peel you get now with these la these new lacquer paints they work really really well and they're pretty they're pretty uh, smooth but they don't have a fabulous shine so you put the gloss coat over them well of course there's a, <laughs> there's a little bit of orange peel and on this particular one I know that it's really hard to see see if I can get an angle on it there um, not really but you can take my word for it that uh, it's a little bit lighter a little hazier and I can see the dimples appearing so I know that I've got to go deeper then I'll move up to the um, <clears throat> well actually I'm gonna move up to my 4000 4000 is as um, is as fine as I have and I'll lightly go over uh, the surface with that now I have to be very careful on corners and edges because this will take the paint completely off in areas like that so I have to be I have to be careful with that wipe it off and it is it is nice and smooth in fact it looks like uh, green plastic uh, I really like that look uh, keep in mind that I don't like them overly glossy <clears throat> a lot of the gloss coats you'll put on will make them look a foot deep and uh, ooh ah that's great except for if you look at the real cars um, they don't usually look a foot deep especially the old paint jobs from the 60s and 70s uh, they had a good shine to them but they just didn't have that that incredible depth uh, this is still gonna have a nice depth to it and a very nice shine to it but at least it'll be nice and smooth so I'm gonna continue to work on this and and we'll see how it turns out well here's our body on our 70 charger pretty much finished I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to paint the uh, the RT on the scoops um, that's indented but we uh, we did get the marker lights painted and we got the chrome trim around the wheel wells painted and all in fact all of our chrome trim um, around the vinyl top and around the windows is painted and I painted this um, the stripes on the hood because the one decal that comes in the kit says 426 and I'm going to be putting a 440 in this one so I had to paint these but there it is, our body, and now we'll head on to the engine and interior.